What's up everybody? I'm back again with another installment of Why Do I Own This? A series of videos where I take a good hard look at my vinyl record collection and attempt to justify owning all these plastic discs with the music on them. Uh, if you want to help me with that quest, I put a link in the description section below to my Discogs account where you can see an up-to-date index of every vinyl record that I own. You can drop into the comments section below and let me know which albums I need to answer for. And I think we'll have a little bit of fun along the way. My name is Adam McDormand and this is Medium Quality. One of the things that I really enjoy about this series is that it's forced me to pull records off the shelf that aren't just the same half a dozen progressive rock albums. Because my musical tastes are broader than that, but I enjoy prog so much that left to my own devices will just talk about that and nothing else. It makes sense then that today we're talking about The Stranger by Billy Joel. This is a pop rock album from 1977 and I think it is absolutely excellent. For the past decade or so, I've loved this album so much that I've even gone so far as to retroactively conceptualize the album within the framework of my love for progressive rock. So much so that I used to refer to this album as a concept album about being a Jersey boy in New York in the 70s. And I know that's ridiculous because this is not a concept album. But it is an extremely cohesive album, both thematically and musically. The storytelling at work on this album all kind of fits together. There's a certain emotional timbre to these songs uh, that seems to evoke the time and the place from whence this album came. And as far as the music itself, the melodies here are, are king. They're front and center. There's no uh, flashy production to get in the way. It's a very good sounding album, but the production is not the thing that makes it so special. It is the way that the production elevates uh, the great melodies of Billy Joel and his band crafting this this work this cohesive piece of music i mean side one by itself is about as close as you can get to a perfect side of a record starting out with moving out anthony's song everyone's heard that but the stranger incredible title track for this album just the way you are brings the intensity down a little bit and gives you a little bit of uh, a respite before side a ends with Scenes from an Italian Restaurant, which is this monstrous song uh, that I think is absolutely incredible. I think it may be one of the finest balladesque storytelling type songs of the era. I, I just think it is an incredible piece of music. Side B is excellent as well, going back and forth from down tempo songs to songs that are more high energy. You start out with Vienna, we ride up to Only the Good Die Young bring it back down for She's Only a Woman, and then bring the intensity right back up with Get It Right the first time. And of course, ending the entire album with Everybody Has a Dream. Obviously, this is an incredible album. The question is, why do I own it? Well, back in 2012, when I was fairly new to record collecting, I was on tour with a band from Michigan, and we were kind of making the rounds around the Midwest, and we played a show in Indianapolis, Indiana. But we had quite a bit of downtime that day, and I wanted to walk to the nearest thrift store and, and do a little digging. And I came across a copy of this album. And I looked at the back, recognized a few of the singles. It was only a couple of bucks, so I snatched it up. And then when I sat down to actually listen to the album in its entirety, the cohesiveness of the album grabbed me. Again, not a concept album, but it resonated with me the way that a great concept album does because of the fact that everything just kind of fits together and takes you on a bit of an emotional journey. Lots of highs, lots of lows. And I very quickly moved this music from nostalgia category, stuff that I heard as a kid on the radio, to oh, this is actually really good. And I was so surprised by this album that as the vinyl record resurgence was happening in 2014, I made a YouTube video about the first five records that you should buy for your record collection. Uh, the video is dated, to be sure, uh, but this album was prominently featured in that video because of the fact that it is both 
interesting and comforting. It is it is an album that is immensely accessible, uh, but also has quite a bit of depth to it. What do you guys think? Is Billy Joel really just music for our parents? Or is it music for us? Is it music for now? Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, make sure you subscribe. Feel free to drop it in the comments section below and let me know what albums you want me to talk about next. And until then, keep spinning that good stuff. What a time to be alive.